So when I hear all of this stuff about the Jews this and the Jews that, and the Jews are doing this and the Jews are doing that, and the Jews are responsible for this or that, my feeling is you better go back and do some homework. You don't have it yet. The Jews don't run anything, period. They're good with figures, they're good because they got good minds, and they're great with law and with figures and banking. And so the powers that be behind the world throne uses Jews because they're good. They know what they're doing. But the power, the real power, is in the Holy Father. The papacy symbols with the swastika. That's in the Vatican. Here's God. He's always pictured in a triangle. Three gods, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, Osiris, Isis, Horus, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, always a triune God because it goes back to Egypt, the pyramid of the triangle. But you'll see he's holding in his hand, God is holding in his hand the earth. And one day God had a son, his name was Jesus. Later God's son became king of kings and lord of lords. So now he's the king of all kings and lord of all lords. Why? Because God the Father created and owned the earth and he holds the earth in his hands, so to speak. So if God owns the earth and all things on it, and he holds the earth in his hands, well, that's why the kings use that symbol, because that's the earth dominated by the Roman Catholic religion. And of course, the kings of the earth, the church was always behind the kings, always advising them, because the king realized that Jesus owns the earth. So don't do anything as a king until you talk to the Holy Father, because that's how you got to have that divine right. I would suggest that each one of you begin to re- look at spirituality from a different point of view. And I believe that there is a profound presence in the world that we call God, whatever God is, but I am totally sure that there is one. The only thing I would suggest that I know works, and this is very, very important, and I think you should listen to this and try it. Just understand that you are a biological battery. You are a biological electrical unit, like a radio, a television, and you can receive waves from somewhere else. You can receive spiritual knowledge. I should explain to you this. Faith, the very word faith is misunderstood in the Christian and Western world. Faith is not what you think it is. The very word faith is a word that uh, means, and the only way I can describe it is that when you get up in the morning, you put your feet on the floor and you didn't look on the floor to see if there was a floor there, but you just got up and put your feet on the floor, not even thinking about it. Why didn't you check to see if there was a floor there? It just has always been there. That's what faith is. That's what faith means, to do something and just assume that God will be there. And it is there. The divine spirit in the universe is always there. It's just you that's been out. But the divine spirit is always there. And so seek and you will find. Ask and you will receive. Jesus saying you have not because you ask not. The spirit of God is watching each one of us. You just didn't know it. And it's watching to see what you're going to do with your life. And if they don't want spiritual direction and protection, well, you have not because you ask not. It's extraordinarily powerful, extraordinarily brilliant and profound in its presence in the universe. And we humans have not even begun to scrape the surface of what's out there. As one astronomer said, the universe is not only stranger than you imagine, it's stranger than you can imagine. I want to express this so you understand. I have the highest of respect for what we have commonly called God. I am totally convinced that there is a higher force in the universe, a matrix of power, that is far, far more brilliant and powerful than anything we have ever contemplated.